Hi Virgo, welcome to your end of November general tarot scope. It's Rena here. And so I wanted to tell you a few transits that are occurring before I lay out the cards, okay? And one of them is a Neptune transit. Neptune is actually turning direct in your seventh house of committed partnerships and this is happening on the 19th of the month. So Neptune has been in Pisces since I believe it was about 2011 or so. I think. I'm not, uh, don't quote me on that one. But it's been there several years and it's going to be there until 2025. I was actually shocked to, to learn of this. I thought it was leaving in 2019 or something. You know, Neptune is one of these outer planets, so the influence is felt over a generation of people. You know, people of, uh, you know, many years have the same uh, Neptune in the same sign. So, you know, it's not something that's particularly personal. But how Neptune interacts with some personal planets can give you an idea of uh, some of the effects that it can have. And likewise, when there's a transiting Neptune, whatever house it transits through, it's going to be there for a long time. And that has to be looked at as well because the energy of Neptune is very otherworldly, you know, illogical, irrational, I should say. It's not, it's, it's mystical. And it's idealistic, but sometimes it can be diluted, it can um, be addictive, it can just be, and when I say diluting, it can actually be that we deceive ourselves with uh, whatever situation is at hand. So it can have a very confusing effect. And actually, it becomes even more illusory in its influence when it's direct. So you may have actually gained clarity on a partner while it was retrograding since June, and now um, it's going direct and there's more fantasy attached to a partner. When I see people, um, you know, in my private readings when I'm looking at their natal chart, and they have Neptune in either the five, fifth or the seventh houses, sometimes I know that they have a tendency to pick addicted partners, partners who misrepresent themselves when they are, you know, dealing with this person. They tell them that they have never had children and they have five children. They, you know, they tell them that they are single and they've been married for 20 years, those kind of things. And so the person can feel continuously disillusioned by romance, by committed partnerships feel a sense of being let down. So it can have a very, um, you know, less than positive effect, but we pick on Neptune too much. There's an idealism associated with Neptune, and Neptune can actually bring that soulmate relationship. If you have it, for instance, in your seventh house, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to have some sort of, uh, you know, cheater as a partner. It could be that you have the ideal husband or wife, you know, the person that is, is meant for you on a spiritual level. So, uh, yeah. And then the other uh, transits are going to be in Sagittarius because we have the sun entering Sag on the 21st, and then there's a new moon in Sagittarius on the 29th of November. And these are both going to be in your fourth house of home and family. So that means that there could be new beginnings in that sector. Okay, so this is a pretty dark reading. I mean, uh, darkly, uh, see how it's... I think it'll work, though, I think. I'm just... I just like that lighting, and I'm afraid that if I turn on my overhead light, it'll be too harsh, but uh, we'll see what happens. Time change. I can, I'm, I'm going to hold it up anyway, so. Hmm. 
Okay. The overall message is the, or the overall um, energy is in the Five of Pentacles. I still would love to know what in tarnation this is related to. I mean, this image. I like the uh, Rider White deck. This is a Morgan Greer. Um, this is the card of limited poverty consciousness or um, lack consciousness. In the Rider White deck, they show two people in rags who are hunched over and they have. Uh, they have their hands out, you know, they're looking for a handout because they're beggars. And um, meanwhile, they're, they're missing that the, the window that they're passing is a stained glass window. It's one of the interpretations is not seeing the blessings and just seeing the lack. But in general, what I see when I see the Five of Pentacles is that there is a perception of limitation of some sort. The number five is a rule by Mercury. So there's an instability. There's a constant change associated flux with the number five. And with pentacles, you know, it's speaking of these fleeting, the finances, the resources being up and down, up and down. And so the person doesn't feel like they have any kind of stability in that area. But in a love reading, it could point to a feeling that the relationship is not on solid ground. You're an earth sign, so you're a natural a creature of the senses, of the physical realm. And therefore, you're very skilled at anything involved with that. So um, you tend to look at the world in those with those eyes of things being tangible and so in relationships you look for proof of things you're not willing to accept words and so you may be seeing a lot of um, you know signs that there is somehow uh, limited opportunities when it comes to relationships um, it could have to do with the person you're dealing with so it could be that you're dealing with a um, earth sign individual like yourself. Um, you know, it, it's possible that there was a water sign person because I'm getting into the past position of walking away, the Eight of Cups. But this could be the, their element. So this could be water, Cancer, Virgo, <laughs> Virgo. Cancer, Scorpio, or Pisces individual. And, um, you know, it, it's funny, though, because if it was a water sign, it's possible that it's not their, I, you know, it might not have even been their sun sign because um, really the water signs are kind of the opposite of what this card represents because this is a card of lack of emotional fulfillment and Kind of like um, leaving that. And uh, the, the water signs out of anybody are the most likely to provide you with that kind of emotional fulfillment because they specialize in emotions. Um, I suppose it's possible to get closed off water signs who do not share their feelings. So, I mean, maybe you ran across one of those people, but maybe it has nothing to do with water signs. It was just you left a situation, but now you're feeling... Uh, you know, it could be that you left a situation and maybe you left for the right reasons. This could be a job for sure. And now you're feeling that pinch, that economic pinch. Um, I feel that some people are going to maybe have a change of heart and they're going to reunite. Either reunite um, with a place of employment that you left. This is a card of reconciliation. But it's also the card of, you know, perhaps making a commitment with a partner. This could be going to the next level in a relationship. And as I talk, talked about that Neptunian transit, you know, it could be kind of an on-again, off-again thing. 
that um, that you're having, and and this would be with somebody from about within the last five years, probably, unless it's a partner that suddenly you develop these um, situations of confusion with that partner. I mean, that's always a possibility. But this is something that you're going to have to reconcile if you're having uh, problems on and off again with your spouse or other long-term partner that you're going to have to decide what you're going to do because Neptune is going to be in this house for another nine years or so, which is hard to fathom, but yes. So you're going to have to kind of suck it up and deal with whatever it's showing you and not shy away from it. But that may be um, indicating that sometimes, you know, you've been with this person and then sometimes you're, it's like on again, off again. But I do see some of you reconciling with somebody that you perhaps walked away from. And maybe it had to do with, um, you know, infidelity or something and maybe you just thought about it and you forgave them and you know you're good could have been a situation like that when people walk away they're doing so especially if they do it after they find out something that really you know shakes them to their core um, it's natural to, that the person walks away but then they think of it, about it and they soften and um, the, the Two of Cups can be about forgiveness, so that's kind of an important thing to mention. The higher message is the Six of Pentacles. So you see the scales, you see the balance. This is a card of, um, it, sometimes it can be somebody who's in a position to help another financially. You see this person looks like royalty. They look like they have a lot of money. They do have a lot of money. Pentacles relate to earth signs. So the higher message could be that an earth sign um, person is the right one for you. If you've been dealing with a water sign uh, person, it may be that you were feeling something negative with, a, with a, an earth sign person, but you um, have reconciled. That would be... Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. Uh, the other thing that the Six of Pentacles relates to is about fairness or, you know, balance. Are you giving more than you're getting in a relationship? And of course, I'm not talking about 50-50, but, you know, some Virgos are so, you know, willing to serve, you know, it's a sign of the servant. Um, and some some Virgos are extremely helpful, extremely dedicated to their partner. But they, you know, sometimes it's just like generosity. It ends up attracting people to them that are very, that are takers and that don't value the fact that they're doing this for them. And that can be problematic because if people don't um, stay with you for the right reasons, then it, it's, it's not an equal relationship. It's like you're putting in way more energy into it than they are, and that's not fair. The card that crosses you is the Page of Swords in reverse. Now, in the upright position, the Page of Swords is about um, and maybe even being somewhat of a spy or t to be very vigilant about, you know, being deceived and um, that sort of thing. But when it's in the reverse position, it can indicate somebody who's kind of allowing themselves to be fooled. And so I go back to what I said about Neptune when it goes direct, you know, seeing what you want to see with a partner. And if you go into that mode you have to accept what comes out of it because the longer you stay in a relationship that is not, you know, equal or is not, you know, serving your needs, that is just kind of serving somebody else's needs, the longer that you're wasting the opportunity to find the person, the soulmate, 
that is right for you. So um, definitely, you know, assess this person that you're possibly sacrificing so much for and see if they are really worth it. If they have shown you that they have a level of commitment that you do. So, you know, that's very important because then you can be a dupe, you know, once again, <laughs> go right back into it. Um, you were you had the courage to leave possibly and then you went back and sometimes that's exactly what you know you need to do but sometimes it just prolongs the inevitable the advice is the fool card may the first card of the major arcana um, just starting afresh starting anew um, no preconceived notions going into a new relationship perhaps with bright eyes, with clear eyes, with, you know, no preconceptions and no prejudices and, um, you know, it takes courage to do something like this, but, and it is an adventure. Life is an adventure. It really is. But a lot of times we, um, you know, especially a, a, a Virgo person, they like you like to look before you leap. You're not, you don't tend to be that um, that willing, you know, that freewheeling in a lot of ways. Um, you're very cautious by nature. So this is about kind of throwing caution to the wind and just um, releasing that need to know what's going to happen. I think that's the best way to put it. And that is so liberating if you can do that. If you can, if you have been in a situation, um, now some of you may have, as I said, gone back with a partner that perhaps was not meeting your needs, but you really, f maybe you felt convinced that um, they had changed. Now I will say that with the Five of Pentacles, it may be more like you just felt like I want to, I, you know, there's nothing, there's no other options for me out here, so I might as well go back to that person. And then that doesn't bode well for the success of the relationship. Hopefully, for some of you, um, that card of Five of Pentacles is not appropriate for your reading, because if you reunited for someone for that reason, that's um, a fear-based reason. It's not a good reason to go back to somebody that you were having problems with. Um, and I actually, you know, when I do private readings, I do seem to get that question a lot where somebody will say to me, and it's almost like they instigated um, the leaving, like, I, like I'm saying about this particular situation, and they'll say, yeah, I left uh, so-and-so, and then I'm wondering if they're, when they're going to come back. And I'm like, okay, but you left them. Why do you want them back, you see? But, and I, you know, I don't even ask that question of them half the time, but Sometimes I do, um, or I, you know, pose it as a rhetorical question. Um, the thing about it is that if you left, there was a reason. And now that you may freak out and say, oh my God, what have I done? You know, I, I'm going to be alone for the rest of my life. Um, that is what you need to, to, to sit with, not getting back together with somebody that you broke up with Probably for a very good reason. Sometimes people, you know, break up for frivolous things, for silly things, but I would say the vast majority of them are for legitimate reasons. And unless you know for sure that the other person has changed or has any intention of changing, then it's really just because you feel a sense of limitation about, you know, what your life can be and you're afraid to move on. Well, the fool card is saying move on and don't have that sense of um, emotional baggage that you're taking with you. The outcome is the seven of wands. And this is, you can see the person is kind of in a defensive posture. So this is basically a lesson to be learned that you need to stand up for yourself more in the future. And um, this is one of the things also, um, when people talk about their 
failed relationships or their dysfunctional relationships and they'll say this person was so controlling they were so abusive and there's no talk about um, how they responded to that control and abuse if somebody is controlling to you um, the answer to that whatever that statement is is like I'm my own person you know you don't tell me what to do if somebody is insulting and say you know I don't think that you and I are a good match because I don't stay I don't live with somebody I don't stay married to somebody who you know talks down to me who who insults me I just don't you know good luck to you and and that's your part of it you you can't control what other people do but you can control how you are treated by your willingness to be in that situation and I know there are certain special circumstances where it's not that easy but in general um, these kinds of things must be said if somebody is doing that you don't know on a higher level whether or not this is just a manifestation of your own lack of self-love and it's kind of showing up in a very animated um, way to act as a mirror for you to, to, to really hold that harsh reflection up this is how you feel about yourself what are you going to do about this and whatever you do it's all about honoring the self and so um, with the seven of wands it's about knowing what your boundaries are, what you're willing to tolerate and what you're not willing to tolerate. And knowing that right off the bat, so that whenever you see those red flags um, pop up, they will you know, probably pop up at the beginning of the relationship and the page of swords in the upright position would spot them a mile away um, because the, the page of swords is very aware of what is going on around him or her. So that's a very good, you know, consciousness to have. So the Page of Swords in that position is somebody who's not seeing the signs, who's refusing to see things as they really are. And that can be very um, destructive for your particular life. So you have to be willing to see things as they are and likewise to um, be very clear about what your boundaries are. So in any case, Virgo, I hope you enjoyed this reading. I do all kinds of um, astrological readings and I include the Tarot in many of them. I look at your natal chart and if you, if you see, I have a link below to my website. Um, you can see what kind of readings I offer if that interests you. Otherwise, have a great rest of November. Bye.